Hi, I'm Kaylee, a librarian here at Mentor Public Library. And I'm Meg, also a librarian, and welcome to this week's edition of All Booked Up with Kaylee and Meg, where each time we give you different book recommendations on a specific theme. This time we're going to be looking at teen award winners. So just like the Oscars and um, the Tonys <laughs> and things like that, there are awards for teen books. So we're going to be looking at four different teen awards and some of the books that have won those awards. Yes, uh, and it's always nice to look at books that have gotten recognition. Uh, usually they're amazing writing, so it's a good way to find some excellent reads. All of the books that we're going to talk about today can be found here at the library as well as online through our digital services with your library card, um, Hoopla and Libby by Overdrive. So Kaylee, what's our first award winner? So the first one I'm going to talk about won the Morris Award in 2020. And the Morris Award is a cool one because it is given to authors who are first time writers for teens. So it's a great way to find the next up and coming authors in teen fiction. So the one that I'm gonna talk about today is called The Field Guide to the North American Teenager by Ben Philippe. And this is about Norris Kaplan, whose life is just straight up ended when his mom moves him to Austin, Texas, as she's a professor and she just got a job there. He, however, is from Montreal and he is a black French Canadian teenager and basically is just as far from a Texas teen as he can ever imagine. And it, also it's like really hot there, like all the time. And he, hates it. So he is also this big movie watcher. So he's seen all the American teen movies and he thinks he knows what to expect going into the American high school. And he finds himself categorizing his fellow students the same way you might categorize birds or nature in a field guide. And he starts categorizing like the cheerleaders, the jocks, even the manic pixie dream girl basically making snap judgments about his fellow classmates. And after a while, he starts to realize that there might be more beneath the surface. You know, people are actually complex. <laughs> Unfortunately, he finds that out when he makes some big gaffes and winds up hurting the feelings of his potential friends in his new town. It really makes him kind of take a hard look at himself and what he has presented to his new neighborhood, his new friends. And the book is interesting because it's a lot of like journal writing kind of things. And it's very funny and he's very sarcastic and honestly not that likable, um, but in a very realistic way. Like he's kind of a jerk. He's very judgy, but he grows. <laughs> and he's a very realistic teenage boy who makes mistakes and learns from them. And it's a really funny, interesting read. And I can definitely see why it was given the Morris Award. Oh, that sounds like a great one. And I, I like the realisticness, I guess you could say, of the character, <laughs> like you were you were saying. And, you know, the stuff that he's going through, feeling like an outsider. I mean, it's kind of natural you'd expect him to make those judgments, maybe. But my next one um, kind of has a similar theme. This is the book Everything Sad is Untrue by Daniel Nairi. And this won the Prince Award, um, the most recent Prince Award. And the Prince Award is a single book winner of each year that exemplifies literary excellence in young adult literature. So there's usually five books total that are honored and then one that's declared the overall winner. It's been given since 2000. And these are some of the most, you know, critically acclaimed, as we've said, like really great books. And this one combines a little bit of fiction, a little bit of nonfiction, a little bit of Persian history, um, all told through the author's eyes as he was when he was 12 years old. So the author, Daniel, his history is that he was born in Iran. And when he was around 12 years old, his family endured religious persecution in his home country. So they decided to try and escape from the secret police. And he ends up in Oklahoma. And it kind of kind of talks about going to middle school and all of the hardships that he endures, um, some of the bullying, some of the, you know, friends he makes and kind of 
it, the book explores like what does it mean to live in America as a refugee, kind of like that outsider experience, while still being proud of his heritage and where he comes from and um, the stories and tales from his home country. So I, I think it's it's such a clever way that the book is told. There's no chapters. It's like one long flowing. Like it's, so it's kind of unique uh, reading experience. It, it gets a lot of comparisons to the classic tale of um, 101 Nights where, you know, the ah. main, um, character tells a story to keep herself alive. This book is also, the Daniel is described as spinning a tale to save his own life or to stake his claim to the truth. So it kind of draws parallels with uh, classic stories like that. So it's very cleverly done. Even though the main character is 12, I feel like anyone of any age can relate to this. Story. Awesome. Well, my next one actually kind of relates to what you said in uh, the young narrator and also sort okay. of having uh, classic tale vibes. Okay. Uh, this is Anna and the Swallow Man mm -hmm. uh, by Gabrielle Savitt. And this actually won the Odyssey Award in 2017. Okay. Um, and the Odyssey Award is actually given to the producer of the best audiobook for children or young adults. And it's a joint award given by the American Library Association, the Young Adult Library Services Association, and the Association of Library Services for Children. So it's a big effort in this one. And so because it's an audio, a lot of times the books have been published a year before, so and sometimes it's reissues, but audio is a completely different take on some books you know some books are just better on audio but this one has a lot of like sort of fable fairy tale in a dark way vibes to it in 1939 krakow poland you know where this is going <laughs> um, uh, there is a seven-year-old girl named anna who has been left to fend for herself in the midst of world war ii her father was a professor and the Gestapo came into town and basically they would round up a lot of intellectuals and her father was taken. He had left her with an acquaintance, a doctor who was a German man who he trusted to take care of his daughter and that man abandoned her as well. So now Anna is traveling with the Swallow Man. He is this mysterious tall figure who seems to speak all languages, even bird. Uh, the way that he lured Anna, I guess, to be with him, to trust him, was that he was able to seemingly communicate with the swallows. And she was so fascinated, she trusted him. And he has an uncanny ability to stay under the radar of the Nazis. The Swallow Man teaches Anna all of these different things, including how to stay hidden, how to stay on the move, how to stay alive and avoid danger. And Anna is entranced by him, but doesn't quite trust him. But at the same time, he's all she has. So she's sort of forced to trust him. Mm -hmm. This elusive, magical figure of some sort that, she, you know, has those mysterious like fairy tale vibes about him. She's not quite sure what to make of him. And the book is told from Anna's perspective. And so because of that, it sort of amps up a lot of that sort of childlike fascination with things that are unexplainable or un unable for you to understand when you're that young. And the book is a war novel, but it's not it's not really a war novel. It's more like the war is taking place all around them and it affects them. It affects them in many ways, in their safety, their food supply, and you know the conditions, living conditions and everything. But you're seeing it from Anna's perspective. So in her world, she's not quite understanding everything that's going on. But you as the reader, or in this case, listener, yeah. will pick up on some things that Anna doesn't quite understand. Uh, so it's just, it's this hauntingly beautiful sort of tale and it's not very long. It's sort of reminiscent of like The Book Thief or The Boy in the Striped Pajamas, both books that are about World War II and have that sort of 
childlike perspective of the situation, but it's an excellent read. Oh man. Yeah. And that sounds like a great one to do as an audiobook, just because of, I don't know, the combination of, I don't know, different characters, one that you don't really know how to read. So mm-hmm. yeah, that seems like a gripping one for sure. Um, also, I think the Odyssey Award is one I haven't looked at too much. So that's a cool one too. So I like hearing about these. My next one is a winner of the Alex Award. So the Alex Award is given to 10 books each year written for adults. So these are, you know, originally written for adults, but are considered to have special appeal to young adults. So they consider that 12 to 18. Mm -hmm. Um, It's been given officially by the American Library Association since 2002, and it's named the Alex Award after Margaret A. Edwards, someone who was deeply involved in the Young Adult Library Association, but she was called Alex by her friends. It's like a nickname, so that's why it's called the Alex Award. There's also an Edwards Award, right? Yes, there is. So she has like two awards. That's pretty impressive. Very important woman. <laughs> yes. Um, so the book I'm looking at that won the Alex Award is called The Kids Are Gonna Ask by Gretchen Anthony. And it's a novel about two t- teen twin siblings who became a national phenomenon after launching a podcast to try and find their biological father that they never knew. So they're 17 years old at the beginning of the book. And they're living with their kind of eccentric grandma, Maggie. She hosts all these like dinner parties every Friday night with these also equally eccentric characters. And, you know, they're doing good, the three of them together. But their mom passed away four years earlier. And she really, they realized as they're getting older, um, the teens, Thomas and Savannah, that their mom never really told them anything about their dad. So they're, they're very curious by nature and they decide that they wanna try and figure out who their father is. And being creative people naturally, they decide that they wanna do it via podcast <laughs> to kind of record how they're, you know, the people that they're gonna to interview to try and find more information and things. And it's slowly, this podcast slowly but surely builds up steam to where it actually becomes a pretty popular podcast. Eventually, it becomes so popular that they're approached by this kind of suspect, uh, slightly, um, they don't really understand him, a person who wants to make the podcast even bigger and kind of sponsor it so that they can become like even like work in a professional studio and get uh, advertising and things like that to the point where it becomes a like national phenomenon this podcast and this new level of fame while they're trying to find their father kind of puts Savannah and Thomas in you know less than ideal situations with all the scrutiny and things like that and so I think the book covers a lot of fame type of questions interestingly but none of that compares none of that stress for the twins compares to when they actually find their father you know, it it actually works. And I won't spoil who the reveal is, but it's very interesting, um, kind of funny too. So um, it's a really amusing look at kind of what is a serious issue, but I I think it's a fun read. (laughs) I can see why that would definitely have crossover appeal. Um, And I mean, we see that a lot with uh, the books that become summer reading books, even for teens. They're often books that have been written for adults, like Of Mice and Men, The Help, right. The Curious Incident of the Dog in the Nighttime. A lot of those are being read by our local schools, and those were originally intended for adult readers, but definitely have appeal and things to learn for teen readers, too. That, that's a great point, exactly. So whether you're a teen or an adult, I think any of these teen award winner books would be a great option for you to read on your next uh, to read list. So thank you for joining us this week's edition of All Booked Up with Kaylee and Meg. Hope you join us next time and get some great book recommendations. Yep. Happy reading.